Und jetzt folgt die deutsche Nationalhymne. Please remind standing for the national anthem of Germany. It's the last game of the year for the Germany under-20 team led by Hannes Wolf and their opponents tonight in Regensburg. The England under-20s under the stewardship of interim head coach Ben Futscher. The former Berry Swindon and Mansfield co-trainer has taken over after coach Joe Edwards recently left to join Millwall in the English Championship. What can England do tonight under Ben Futscher against Hannes Wolf's Germany? We're about to find out here in Regensburg. England in all red in their away jerseys, blue numbers on the back. Germany in their traditional white with black home shirts. Hannes Wolf's team get things started with a throw in over on the left hand side. England regaining control of possession and they'll look to bring it forward but it's actually Germany who'll be able to bring it back the other way and into the penalty area first shot on goal and it was lashed just over the top appeals for a corner ball that won't be working out the referee says 
England's man in yellow, James Beadle, didn't get a touch as the ball sailed just over the top. Forward pressure from Germany as England look to pass it out and they get it up to the halfway line. But they won't go any further as it's all the way back to Chuck Ernst, the man in goal for the DFB under 20s today. A minute played, one shot on target, or just off target rather. One shot on goal, just over the top from Germany. England yet to really get on the ball in opposition territory. Here go Germany again with a chance to stretch the legs down the right-hand side. Cross blocked quickly by Luke Chambers, the Liverpool youngster. Captain tonight for England, Ronnie Edwards. Peterborough player. It's been a difficult time for the under-20s. This technically is a game in the U-20 Elite League. It's classed as a friendly game or a test spiel, as they call it, nonetheless. But England have struggled of late. They lost on Thursday by three goals to nil in Doncaster against a strong Italy under-20 team. Imran Soglo, the youngster at Marseille, did get on the score sheet in Milton Keynes in a game in October against Portugal, but that was, in the end, a 2-1 defeat for England. The young Lions failing really to roar to life. They lost to Romania 2-0 as well in Bucharest back in October. Germany thinking about the short corner option over from the right corner. They'll get it lofted into the box instead, and it's headed away. It's Nelson Abbey getting that out of the box for now. Germany in possession over on the left. The tackle comes in quickly. It's back out for another throw in. Germany settling a little quicker in the opening three minutes, but we still have a long, long way to go, of course. Throw in taken quickly and lofted all the way back towards the centre circle and Germany will bring it out towards Oliveira and look to start again his pass might be a little bit short though chance for England to break forward four men in red in opposition territory if they can play the pass right it's a little over hit out to the left and that will stall England's progress but they'll go again and try and get something into the box Oliver Ablaster might be the option to come back instead they go along the byline but it's hacked away clear for an England throw in the young crowd in Regensburg cheering the end of the England attack. Our blaster, the man from Port Vale, goes for the pass through into the penalty area. Just got wires crossed, and it was an easy gather for Chag Ernst. Ernst calmly knocking it out within the penalty area. This time he looks left. But Germany patient in possession in the defence. Happy to just knock the ball around. Out to the left side they go, almost up to the halfway line, but England pressure pushes them back towards Jack Ernst, a 20-year-old keeper from Hertha in Berlin. Through ball through everybody. England almost dallying on that a little bit too long at the back. Goalkeeper passing it out calmly, right in between the Germany forwards. Top marks for bravery. And the execution was on point as well, but Germany have it back for another throw in just in front of the dugout over on the left hand side. Five minutes played. Germany under 20s still level goalless against England in the early stages here. One shot from Germany that flew over the top of James Beadle's goal in the first few seconds, really. And that one marshalled out of play for an England goal kick.
Pulled down the right hand side is quite creatively headed back into the arms of the goalkeeper. Thumbs up for the work as well from Chuck Ernst. Nicolas Oliveira gets it back to the keeper. Whistle's gone over on the left flank and Germany won't be able to build from there because the free kick has gone England's way. It would be meaningful for Ben Futcher tonight if the England under-20s, the Young Lions, can pick up a result of some kind in Regensburg. It has been a bit of a barren spell. The only thing in their favour on paper tonight is actually that they inflicted the last defeat upon Hannes Wolf's Germany under-20s. That came back in March. But here come Germany into the penalty area. Big chance for the opening goal. And they find it as well. The roar of the home crowd in Regensburg. And Germany hit the front early on. Paul Wanner was there. And the ball was just slotted through into the penalty area and slotted past the goalkeeper in a very similar manner. And Germany strike first. Just as I was saying, England have been on a barren run. They're onto the back foot. Touch came from Darko Giabi, the defender. The England number eight just touched it forward. And that deceived the rest of the defence and knocked it all the way into the area. Unfortunate for England. But how well did Paul Vanna do? He took full advantage. Surely a bit of shirt tugging going on, or at least arm tugging. The referee lets things play on, and it's back with Ronnie Edwards for England. Paul Vanner, the goal scorer. Only 17 years of age. It is the under-20s, of course. There are other age categories. Vanner, the youngster at Elversberg, a team who've been on the rise through the league rankings in German football in the past couple of seasons. Vanna getting some brilliant senior experience and now building on that with some youth national team experience too. Germany under Hannes Wolf have been quite an imposing team in this U20 elite league. It was Ben Bobzian who got the goal in stoppage time to beat Romania on Friday. But before that, it was a good run as well. Germany beating Czech Republic or Czechia by four goals to two. Amindo Zeeb on the score sheet. Mika Bauer with a brace. Mohamed Damar as well getting an own goal and then scoring at the right end in stoppage time. Germany have also gone and beaten Portugal. Before that, a couple of draws against Poland and also against the strong Italy team. Technically at the moment they're on 11 points and in first place in the U20 Elite League. Things might change after tonight's match, but for now, scored 10, conceded 5. And that's a lovely ball into the box if they can keep it in play, and they can, and it's a good square ball across the area as well. Vanna again causing danger for Germany. But crucially for England, they were able to cut out the cross as it came over the six-yard box. The goalkeeper was in all kinds of trouble there, James Beadle. Not much that he could do about it. It was just a really good through ball. Searching across there. Very difficult to commit over on the angle. Beadle had to come across and try to narrow down his near post. But that always left the cut back into the area as a viable option. And Germany played it well. Ultimately, all that was lacking was a white and black shirt in the middle to get the final touch. England relieved to get it away. And now they've got it down the other end for a set-piece situation. Samidozi 
standing over it with Luke Chambers as well. Chambers, the left-footed option, hand is up from Edozi instead. Ball into the box, headed down and out of the area. Could be a break on for Germany as well, and that's a big touch and one to chase. Strong defending. Germany pushing for the break with Ben Bobsey in. It didn't quite come off for them. Elias Ansa can bring it forward now. Shooting chance. Again, it's parried by the goalkeeper. Clearance wasn't easy with Germany shirts racing into the penalty area. But Germany again looking dangerous every time they go forward. This is such a well-drilled team that Hannes Wolf has put out. Real depth as well. Back into the centre they go. It's given away. Back with England, but not for long. They'll chase it into the left corner if they can get it. Germany should be first to it, and indeed they are. England pick it back up around the halfway line, and they win the throw in as well. Chambers to take it, and get things restarted for an England side who've fallen behind early on here. Paul Vanner's calm finish after Ben Bobzian had fired the ball over the top early on. Down into the penalty area they go. Can they get any further? Down the right side they go this time, England. A little bit of room to run. It's a decent ball as well. Across the box, unfortunately for England. It didn't earn them a corner. Matteo Joseph, the Leeds man, was lurking in the centre. Germany again very patient as they work it out from the back and they've carved through here it should be offside flag is indeed up the ball was squared there to answer in the box but it was too late by that point Back with Germany in the centre circle. 15 minutes gone. Paul Vanner's goal separating the two teams. Germany have it at the back. Henry Blank. Borussia Dortmund reserve player. Now all the way back to the keeper again. Jack Ernst, who's had very little to do. England have had a couple of promising opportunities couple of those deflected behind. The one deflected harmlessly into the arms of Chag Ernst. Now Germany will look to turn and go here, but they're forced backwards. Darko Jabi coming down to put a bit of pressure on. 
England will get it back in the centre circle this time. Alfie Devine can bring it forward. Devine. Tottenham Hotspurs. Tottenham Hotspur, rather, his parent club. Playing at Port Vale this season, though. A lot of these players, of course, with parent clubs in the top flight, out on loan, lower down the divisions to get a bit of match practice. Alfie Devine, one of several loanies in the team. There were a couple of changes to the team as well. Archie Gray has gone back to Leeds after the game against Italy. Jamie Wright of Aston Villa was called in. The pathway is obviously working reasonably well for England too with Aston Villa's Esri Concert, Chelsea's Cole Palmer and Manchester City's Rico Lewis all getting their first senior call-ups for Gareth Southgate's England team this month. At the under-20 level though, a little bit of a struggle in 2023. Germany in position right now to round off the calendar year with a victory. Still early doors here with 17 minutes gone. Nelson Abbey drops it off for Divine. England go down the right-hand side once again. Samadozi waiting in the box. As is Matteo Joseph. Difficult one for the keeper to deal with. A little bit awkward inside the muddy six-yard box. He squirmed past Ernst initially. The man with the captain's armband recovered to make the grab and put a stop to the ball. England threatening. They have looked good down that right flank once they've got it into the final third. It's been a little better from the young Lions since falling behind, but Germany settling well, starting very strongly in this match here in Regensburg. England pushing that one all the way back too, but Germany avoided the pressure initially. Got the ball out towards the left flank, but it was just a little bit too much to ask for. Tom Rota over there, unable to gather. And England have it with Luke Chambers. Up to the halfway line they go with Alfie Devine. No further. Twenty minutes played then, and it's Wolf watching over the team. Surely a very satisfying start to this elite league match at the Jahnstadion in Regensburg. Germany leading thanks to Paul Wanner. Credit on the assist for the goal. We'll come back eventually, really, to Darko Jabi, the Leeds United man, who pushed it into his own penalty area. Rather unfortunately, tried to stretch out a foot and get a block on the pass, but turned the ball from the midfield really into a more dangerous through ball than it might have been. Flummoxed the rest of the England defenders. Teed the ball up perfectly for Paul Vanna. Vanna still had work to do, and he completed that task with a fine finish. Here comes Germany again. That's a lot to ask with the pass forward in the direction of Ilias Ansa. Was far too far ahead of the Paderborn striker.
It's Alexander Pavlovich, Kaspar Yander and Alyosha Kimmelin making up that midfield trio for Germany today. And they've been pretty effective in their duties at getting it towards the top three, Vanna, Ansa and Bobzian. But here come England at the other end. Sam Edozi out into the corner. Edozi steps up inside and passes to Chambers. Drops it back to Jabi. Skips around and might shoot here. Too central, too low. Ultimately, nowhere near enough on it. We're dreaming of a curler into the top corner from that position if you're Darko Jabi. Instead, that one rather harmlessly trickled towards Chark Ernst. And now Germany can line things up again over on the right side. Oliveira and Bobzi in combining. It's Tim Ehrman, Henry Blank and Tom Rota making up the rest of the defence alongside Nicolas Oliveira. Pass forward, cut off by Chambers. Good ball in and a nice turn as well from Matteo Joseph. He's going to fight away for that. Germany kept it in and England knocked it out. In the end, the last touch came off Samadozi. A little bit of an awkward ball to deal with there for the Germany back line, but they get it away and it's all the way back through to the Oxford United goalkeeper, James Beadle. Another one with the Premier League parent club, Brighton and Hove Albion in his case. Pressure on over on the left-hand side from Ben Bobsey and it pays off as the pass goes astray and Germany can come back the other way quickly here. England doing well again to get the positioning right and force the Germany under-20s back into their own half. This time they'll look long straight away as they spread it out to the right-hand side. It's a nice ball to Oliveira into Ben Bobsey and chance to square this across the area if he can. Almost let it run out of play. Just about got the crossover into the box in time. And Germany will pick this back up in the midfield. Simple passing, but effective passing too. Nicolas Oliveira tees up the cross. Headed away well, just on the corner there, the front corner of the six-yard box. Germany can recycle this and pick possession back up on the halfway line and Ehrman will try and get things restarted. Good ball again and more space in on the right-hand side. Ball in behind two, a little bit too far. Well left, Nelson Abbey. Reading player coming over and closing it down. Oliveira giving a good impression of himself so far, just overhitting that pass slightly as Bob Zian was coming in. And he wasn't too far off. It's actually Mika Bauer who scored the most goals in this elite league for Germany so far. Three to his name, including a brace against Czechia. Got another one in the 2-1 victory against Portugal. Mika Bayer of Freiburg. Not in tonight's starting 11. Chance for Hannes Wolf. To give some minutes to new players. Always important, of course, at this level and indeed at any level, really. But at U20, when your sole purpose of matches like this is just to gather experience... It's really important to change things around and try out something else. Oliveira of Hamburg moving forward here. Nearly closed down by his own teammate. 
That's a long searching pass. Keepers alert to it. Beadle way out off his line. Came outside his area to make the clearance. Got there first and got it away. So it is tough for England with head coach Joe Edwards just leaving to join Millwall. It's too good an opportunity to hit for him to pass up. Very much established championship side in the second tier of English league football. The head coaching position there for somebody like Joe Edwards was simply too good to turn down. But it's not like Ben Futcher's new, new position perhaps. A few new responsibilities, but he's got Jason Yule alongside him too. There's plenty of experience in that young Lions dugout. U20 Elite League, of course, not just a place for players to cut their teeth, but managerial prospects as well. Jabi touches it forward. England away over on the right-hand side. Flags up from the assistant referee waves it on not sure how that could have been for offside maybe the linesman over on the far side spotted what he thought was an infringement referee didn't agree it's going to be a card for that that was the infringement that the linesman will have spotted didn't see it initially now we see the reason that the referee has reached for his yellow card for the first time just inside half an hour In the previous head-to-heads between Germany under-20s and England. England had three victories in succession. Before that, three draws, but the victories culminated in that most recent defeat for Germany under-20s. Back in March, big chance for England to find the leveller, and they do so as well. A clever finish, but it slips underneath the goalkeeper and over the line. Matteo Joseph boos from the crowd, but England are level. Marshall Godot over to celebrate. Sam Edozi of Southampton with a little bit of work over in the left-hand side of the penalty area. Got the ball over into the six-yard box. Joseph tried a somewhat audacious flick. The ball came just a little bit further behind where he wanted it. He got the better of Ehrman and just went for the flick as the ball passed his standing leg. And it was just enough to turn it down and past Chuck Ernst, who probably wasn't helped by the muddy conditions within his six-yard box. That ball would have glued to the turf and stayed low. Didn't bounce up onto the glove of Chuck Ernst, just squirmed underneath him instead. But crucially for England, it snuck over the line. So after a quiet period following Paul Vanner's opening goal, a little bit of action in the last couple of minutes. Tom Rota picking up a yellow card and then suddenly Matteo Joseph levelling matters for England under-20s. Germany on the break here. Oliveira in the box. 
crossed it quickly, might have taken time to control it. Germany corner nonetheless. Referee over just to give a talking to there as England booted the ball away just after it had gone out. Fairly standard procedure, but technically frowned upon. Corner whipped in towards the six-yard box. Headed back out over to the left flank. Vanner, the goal scorer. His pass down the touchline, deflected out for another Germany throw-in. Referee might be reaching for the yellow card once again there, but he's thought better of it so far. Daco Giabi it was. Had a good look at the ball, but ended up being a split second too late. Came in a little bit with studs up there. Germany with a set-piece situation from a promising position over on the left. Chance for some runners from the edge of the area if they can whip in the cross. They'll go low instead. Training ground routine. It's going to be easy for the keeper. Beadle boots it downfield looking for the quick escape route. It wasn't a bad idea to be honest. Played it right onto the foot of Sam Edozi. And Edozi's still going now on the right-hand side. He's got options in the middle if he can use them. Won't be easy to get it across. Indeed, it proves too difficult to pick out a red shirt. Chalk Ernst, the man in position to make the gather. Back to the keeper they go. The game now tied up at 1-1. Germany having led for most of these first 35 minutes. England now back on level terms thanks to Matteo Joseph's clever finish. The Germany bench erupting in frustration there some of the tirade aimed towards the fourth official some towards the referee but nobody happy except Oliver Arblaster who's standing over the free kick and waiting to take it England eventually take it by knocking it back into their own half. Edwards, with the captain's armband, goes across towards Nelson Abbey. And the two of them just combine. Now England will look a bit longer. That pass is floated too long and too far out towards the left flank and straight out, leaving Sammy Dozy with no chance. Good turn. Germany away down the right-hand side. Edwards able to get it back towards the goalkeeper quite comfortably. This time the long pass out down the left to England does find its target. Idozi. Not sure whether that was a pass into the area or a shot. Didn't quite come off as either. Ended up aiming towards the back post, but it was low and it 
didn't have the power on it. Gasps from the fans here as the goal kick or goalkeeper's clearance at least is charged down and blocked and that's why England are back on the ball deep inside the final third here. Skirting the edge of the area. Good ball in. Diving header attempt from Idozi. The ball stays in for England. Chambers tightly marked up against the touchline but he'll try and turn his way out and away from Ben Bobsey and he does so for now. So it's been a good first half of football so far. One goal apiece. One shot narrowly off target from Germany, but both teams have shown some of their strengths at times. Germany on top of the game in the early stages. England taking a little bit of time to settle once they went 1-0 down, but gradually they found a way to exert some pressure on the Germany back line. And they've got their level or two. And now it's back open. And it's anybody's game. England had come into this one with three defeats on the bounce. Scoring once, conceding seven times. So important for them at least to get on the scoreboard here in Regensburg. Seventh of eight teams in the under-20 Elite League before this fixture. Germany right up at the other end of the table. They've played more games than some teams, but looking good. Three victories on the bounce as Germany try and work it into the final third. Oliveira. Bobzian skipping one way, then the other. Does really well there. Ben Bobzian all the way into the D. Can he go any further? Not this time. Not afraid to take on players at all. Scored twice in this elite league, Ben Bob's Ian. An interesting club season for him as well. Getting a lot of first team football in the Austrian Bundesliga. Applies his trade, Bob's Ian. And Austria Lustenau. A team from very close to the border with Liechtenstein and Switzerland. Really, really struggling and yet to win a game in this season. And it's now. Late November, bottom of the Austrian Bundesliga, but nonetheless a promising season of football at club level for Ben Bobzian. Applying that as well for the junior DFB teams. That was down to the right-hand side, close to the byline. England appealing for offside. And the cross was harmless. Good news for the crowd who've made it along tonight in Regensburg. Food and drinks ready to be served at half time. We're still five minutes away from that. I'm not sure we'll get much in the way of stoppage time. There have been two goals, of course, and a couple of stoppages for set pieces. Could easily imagine one minute being added, but in an under 20 friendly like this, I'd be pretty sure that this will be blown for the end of first half right on 45 minutes. Let's see. Four minutes to go until we can think about that. For now, is there a twist in the tail to the end of the first half? England looking more and more comfortable on the ball as time goes on. Germany initially able to really stop England getting comfortable, certainly in the Germany half. But that's changed a little bit now. Germany, for their part, still... Looking ever so dangerous when they do go forward. They've definitely got the capability of cutting open this England defence. Edozi. Out to the D. Shot fired just over the right angle. Darko Giabi. 
crouches down to the turf in frustration. That was very close indeed. A really decent hit from inside the D. Keeper Ernst taking the situation very seriously indeed. Full stretch up towards the top corner. He was getting nowhere near that. They had to keep her. Crucially though, just as Ben Bobzian did in the first couple of minutes of the game. This time it's England who fire narrowly over the crossbar. Straight back out of play there. Cheap giveaway. England will gratefully accept the throw-in that comes their way deep down the left-hand side into Germany territory. Chambers of Liverpool turns on the ball. Plays the pass back up into the middle. Oliver Arblaster lets it run. Ronnie Edwards will get it back on its way. There's a searching ball down the right-hand side and England should be able to keep that in play. Corner flag gets involved to help that one. And England dig out the throw in, but nothing more. It's cushioned back down the right touchline. Will they let it go out? Ryan Andrews says, yes, please. And the Watford player happy to pick up the throw in. England looking for the free kick down there by the corner flag. They won't get it, though. Instead, Tom Rota goes over to get ready for a throw-in. Is that the last action of the first 45 here? Or will we get one more chance on goal, perhaps? England gave it a good go from the D just a second ago. Again, they want the free kick with a man down on the ground, but not this time. Long ball forward, straight down the middle. Not for the first time this evening. The goalkeeper has to be alert to get out of the area and win the foot race to that. And that's been how the danger's created from Germany mostly tonight. Straight down the middle or innocuous looking passes really. Just when they get the positioning right and they find a gap between defenders, that front three have been switched on to the danger. They've been ready to run in and try and cause trouble. It has worked out a couple of times for the DFB 11. One minute added. We're almost up at the end of that anyway. Ben Bobzian into the box. One last chance perhaps for Germany. Crosses cut back. It's a decent one. Pressure in the area. Referee waves play on there as Germany were looking for a penalty. Ilias answer down in the box. Samidozi gets it away and that will be that for the first half, you'd imagine. Quick free kick to be taken. Surely not much more time to go. England pass it back. No rush here. At the very end of the first half in Regensburg, England will look long. That one's cut out, but the header back almost ended up with the number nine, Joseph, the goal scorer for England. He rather jumped past it. Now it's fired clear by Ernst, and that surely will bring an end to the first 45 minutes, and indeed it does. Germany won, England won the half-time score from Regensburg. A half 
in which both teams have had their moments. 1-1 one, one, a deserved half-time scoreline. Germany starting brightly. Ben Bobsey and firing over the bar. Paul Vanner eventually played through with the pass from Kasper Yanda that was deflected by Darko Jabi into the path of Vanner. Vanner finished off with a fine clip into the corner for 1-0 Germany. But Samadozi showed some good footwork in the left-hand side of the penalty area and got the ball across to Matteo Joseph. And Joseph as well with some fine footwork of his own to flick the ball behind and low past Jack Ernst. The ball just squirmed over the goal line to level things up for England. And that is how the half-time score is Germany under 20s 1, England under 20s 1. Don't go anywhere because we'll be back in Regensburg in just a minute. Welcome back to the Anstadion Regensburg. Second half is underway in Regensburg. Germany under 20s 1, England under 20s 1. What will change in the second 45 minutes? There were good spells for both of the two teams in that first 45 minutes. 1-1. One, one. A very reasonable scoreline as we restart the second 45. Germany have it with Rote, one of the few players to have been cautioned in the first 45. England got away with a couple. And here they come down the right-hand side, Martial Godot. Godot, the man from Wigan with a good ball across. And what a chance at the beginning of the second half from Darko Giabi, who really should have put England ahead inside 45 seconds of the restart. Godot, the Wigan player, played it across towards the penalty area and towards the penalty spot, rather. Darko Jabi was moving in and side-footed it somehow over the top. Looked at the turf in frustration afterwards. Must have bobbled onto the foot. But what a chance for England at the beginning of the second half there. Here come England again. The other way around this time with Jabi playing it to Marshall Goddo. Goddo side foots the ball, cushioned it into the penalty area, but it was too soft. Back with James Beadle. Nelson Abbey now. England calmly out to the right hand side with Ryan Andrews. Good start to the second half here. Only two minutes played and it's been all England since the whistle was blown. Germany yet to find their feet. Just like in the first half, actually. The ball fired narrowly over the top. Around about 40 seconds into the game. Bobsey and it was in the first half and now Darko Giabi in the second half. He'll get another chance. Good block. That was hammered towards the goal. Well stopped. Martial Godot making a nuisance of himself again. Over on that right-hand side, but Germany holding strong in the penalty area for now. Ryan Andrews. Andrews of Watford goes back to Edwards. Edwards passes it across. Germany hardly with any possession, certainly in terms of an attacking sense. Nothing to speak of in the second half yet. Just a couple of defensive clearances. Nothing more. And here come England again. They pick up the ball and move it out to the right-hand side. Devine gets it over to the right. And it came back in for Marshall Godot. This time it was Godot who scuffed the contact. A few jeers and whistles coming from the crowd in Regensburg because that one has actually been given as an England corner. And will they opt to take this quickly? They started moving it over slowly with Alfie Devine, but now they've got it going. Space for Oliver Ablaster. Has a look with the left foot. Ablaster 
Only finding the arms of Chuck Ernst. Ernst boots the ball downfield. England pick it back up on the halfway line. It's well worked to move forward. They've picked up plenty of yards here. The pass easily cut out, though. Henry Blank in the middle. Very comfortable. The pass was directly towards the German centre-back. Germany pick that ball up on the halfway line. Chance to look forward. The idea was to get that pass behind the England back line and move it over to the left-hand side. Perhaps wrong foot a couple of players as the ball goes towards Paul Vanner, but it was deflected harmlessly back towards the England penalty area. And England, five minutes into the second half, continue their push forward. Well, whatever Ben Futcher said at half-time. It's had a decent impact on this young England team. The young Lions flying out of the blocks in the second half. Five and a half minutes played. Two or three good chances gone begging. And it's still Germany 1, England 1 in Regensburg. That's well worked down the left-hand side, though. Now Germany with a chance. The Walters ball cut out well. That was really a necessary intervention as well. There was space in behind there for Germany down the left flank. They almost took advantage of it. Taco Jabi penalised. It's Alexander Pavlovich who's back to his feet. Yanda. Drops it back. It is a feature of this team. Just how patient they're happy to be on the ball. They try and model their style of football, of course, on the senior sides. Not necessarily just a senior national team, but successful senior club sides too. And teach the best of the practices from senior level. It goes without saying, really, that that is what Hannes Wolf is trying to emulate. It's not just about results, even at this level. The under-20 national team, definitely a bridge and a pathway towards senior football within their club teams and senior national team football in the future. Germany and England as well, of course looking to produce a talent pool that can play in the way they want their players to play. Gone are the days of just hoping that players come out and you can just adapt the finished products into your national team. It hasn't worked like that for a long time now. You think back to the turn of the millennium and German national team struggles. Just putting in place a unified plan across the nation to develop coaches and develop players in the way that they wanted, aiming to win a World Cup with it. Germany, of course, achieved that success with the senior team in 2014. Foot race on there, but it'll be won by the England defence and it's played back with a bit of a sting on it towards James Beadle. A little bit too much weight on that, the defender just saying, why didn't you boot it back? Nelson Abbey... Gave it to his keeper with too much on it. Germany picking up the throw in and another one here. It is a decent crowd in attendance tonight. 
in Regensburg. No surprise, really. This under-20 team. Well, both of these under-20 teams packed with players that are well worth watching. That's deflected over, and is it deflected all the way in? It is! Somehow it squeezes in at the back post. The ball looped up and over. James Beadle was beaten on the goal line. He was scrambling back towards the back post, but he couldn't keep it out. As soon as it looped up into the air, you felt it might be dangerous for the England keeper, and so it proved to be. That came from the excellent work on the right-hand side from Ben Bobzian, and then it took a huge deflection. I think it's Marshall Goddo who slices it awkwardly from one number seven to the other, but it was up and over, and as you can see from the wild celebrations, Ben Bobzian doesn't care, he's claiming it. It's off the shin, isn't it, of Goddo. It is a grim own goal, really, but to concentrate on the bright spot for Germany. It was a wonderful bit of movement on the right from Ben Bobzian. Somehow, after England coming flying out of the blocks, it's Germany who get the first goal in the second half, and surely that has crossed the line and was off for a goal kick. Marshall Goddo won't want to look back on the way that actually went in, but Ben Bobzian will be delighted to have contributed to that goal. Germany pass it forward with Alyosha Kemlein. Just quickly out towards Kasper Yander on the right, but England have it back down their left flank and they'll go forward. Into the penalty area they go. Referee waves away before a protest had really come to bear. Beadle knocks it down towards his captain Edwards. England will be scratching their heads as to how they've fallen 2 1 behind at the beginning of this second half. They had chances, two or three, including a big one from this man here, Darko Giabi. They really could be 2-1 up themselves, but they're 2-1 behind. Jabi battling away, and that's a hefty challenge coming in too. Germany escape, though. They get away with it down the left-hand side. England tried to keep the pressure on and keep the ball high up the pitch. Germany got it down towards the edge of the England area, but no further. Now Darko Jabi again going backwards. England throw over on the right side. Marshall Goodo not too happy, saying, what do you want me to do with that anyway? As Ryan Andrews looked forward tight against the touchline, there wouldn't have been much room for England to work with had the pass come off, but instead they had the throw in, and they've gone back into the defence. Ronnie Edwards, Nelson Abbey. England could use the result here, having lost 2-0 to Romania, 2-1 to Portugal. And now there's a big chance for the leveller, deflected back into the box, still alive, space in the area, deflected and in. England do find the leveller, and after falling behind, it's only taken a couple of minutes for Sami Dozi of Southampton to find the back of the net and level this up at 2-2. Germany perhaps... Moving ahead, slightly surprisingly, in the second 45 minutes. But England finding a quick response to open this game up again. It was really unlucky. Tim Ehrman throwing himself at the ball in defence. Jack Ernst, the keeper, with absolutely nothing possible that he could do about it. Initially, the block was good on the edge of the six-yard box, but... 
struck fiercely against the face, really, of Tim Oman. Herman's going to be looked at here. It's very unfortunate for him. Did well to cut out the initial ball into the area that could have been a tap-in for England. Only to see Samadozi pick up the rebound, blast it against his face, and then into the back of the net for equal measure. England with their first substitutions. Alfie Devine... One of the players to go off. Divine with the number 10 shirt makes his way over. Triple substitution from head coach Ben Futcher. So what a quick start it's been. 15 minutes have flown by since the restart. Marshall Goddard getting a bit of uh, consolation from the England dugout having scored the own goal that put Germany 2-1 ahead not long ago. He'll feel rather better, you'd imagine, going off at 2-2 rather than going off with his side trailing 2-1. It's been an all-action start. England missing chances. Darko Jabi firing over the bar seconds after the restart. Then Bob's in with some fine footwork down on the right-hand side. And his cross leading to Marshall Godot's own goal to give Germany a 2-1 advantage. And now Samadozi rifling the ball home via a big deflection off Tim Ehrman. Back in to level things up again for England. England win control of the ball in a good position here. Chance for the substitutes perhaps to make an impact. It's Ryan Andrews instead who launches in the cross. Far too far. Nowhere near Samadozi. England work it well on the left-hand side here. Going up against the Germany defensive wall. Germany with room to run on the right-hand side. Bob Zian, you know what he can do if he's got a bit of space. It's a good ball in as well. Contact in the middle from Aliosha Kemline, but it was up and over the top. Difficult one to convert. Tim Obermann is running, uh, go down, 
you to the field number 40, Joshua Dvasi. Good ball out to the right-hand side. England have it with Bell, a new man onto the field. Good low ball across the middle, and it's well cleared from right in front of his own goal, too. We've already seen England score an own goal from a less probable position. Germany doing well not to add to the tally of Eigentor goals, as they call own goals in Germany. So we've had Tim Uhrman, unfortunately, withdrawn for the DFB under-20s after the goal that deflected in off his face. It's Joshua Krashi who's come on. England with a triple substitution of their own first. England throwing over on the right hand side. You can see the number 17 there, Sam Bell, a Bristol City man. He's come on, Dane Scarlett's come on too. That's as Adam Wharton. It's divine. Joseph, one of the goal scorers for England. Godot the own goal scorer for Germany. And they've been withdrawn from the field. Throw in for Ryan Andrews. Delayed a little bit in taking it. Germany can knock that down and keep control. Henry Blank moves it forward but gets it back from Kaspar Yanda. Anybody's game this at 2-2. You fancy that there are more goals in it. I might have cursed that now, of course, but it does feel like the kind of game that's going to have a couple more goals. Certainly, if either side were to go 3-2 up in the next few minutes, you wouldn't feel like they've got the job done by any means. England... With a free kick in a decent situation, Oliver Arblaster hauled down. The yellow card comes out as well for Alexander Pavlovich. Germany perhaps a little unfortunate to get a couple of cautions to their players. England have voided a few for some pretty heavy challenges. That one was more of a cynical tug back, though. It's a great angle to have a look at the free kick. It might be a little bit too central, really, to beat the goalkeeper. England will certainly feel like having a go, nonetheless. Any chance they can go direct from here. We'll find out soon. It's taken direct and it's into the wall. Just fired into the wall of Germany defenders. But England pick up the loose ball and they go forward again. Throw in only in front of the England dugout as more changes are being lined up. The wall doing its job pretty much to perfection there. Came off the shoulder of Joshua Klashi. He's just come on.
Looks like it'll be Dako Jabi and Samidozi who are withdrawn. Germany making a change as well. Make that a triple change. Off comes Tom Rote. I say triple change, make it quadruple change, perhaps. Yusuf Kabadai, Armindo Sieb, all in there. Robert Wagner coming on, Franz Kratzig as well. Very much a new look Germany side for the final 20 minutes here in Regensburg. England loft the ball back into the defence and then cushion it forward as well. It's not head tennis, it's volley tennis, but England get it down and settle again at the back. And I said at 2-2, looked like an open game and you'd fancy one of the teams to go on and get another goal, if not more. Now, how will those substitutions affect the way that the game takes place for the last 20 minutes should be some fresh legs maybe a fresh impact as well or a fresh tactical change It's well wide and out from a good position for a goal kick. Germany on the ball over the halfway line and want to run. Offside flag stays down for now. Germany breaking into the penalty area. Shooting chance, well blocked. Deflected and the loose ball will come back kindly for England. But that was well done down the right. Germany just showing the kind of dangers that are lurking there. It's not like they haven't shown that already today, to be fair, but the game seems to have settled down and almost quietened down a bit with all the substitutions. Kratzig moves it back. Germany over on the right-hand side. Crowd whistling as Germany are temporarily reduced to 10 men. Umo Tohumshu fires them all out of play towards his own dugout, or towards the England dugout, actually.
Well, there's a look at what happened. You can see both sides of that one. It was an unfortunate collision, really, the timing of that. Here's a look at the breakaway over on the right side. Aminda Zeeb. This is the goal that temporarily put Germany in front as the ball looped up and over the goalkeeper. An own goal of pretty comical proportions from England, but they responded really well. And Idozi fired in off the unfortunate Tim Ehrman for 2-2. Free kick goes Germany's way again, this time in favour of Ben Bobzian. England scored their first leveller of the day from a quick free kick. Germany opting to take that one slowly. England fancy the free kick for that shirt tug. They didn't get it. Germany in possession on the edge of the area. They'll get it into the corner of the box now. Bobzy and knocks it back to Armindo Zeeb. Zeeb still going. Shot blocked and booted away by Adam Wharton. England over on the left now, shooting chance from outside the box. It ricochets off the post and across the goal face. And back over to the right-hand side. England still in possession, they'll fire that one across the box as well. Header turned back towards the far post. And that's a flying save from Shark Ernst to keep it out. What a spell that was for England. Over 30 seconds. Big, big chances. A little unfortunate on both occasions. The first one past the despairing dive of Chuck Ernst, but away off the, fo off the post, across the face of the goal. Hit the base of the post. Deflected away to Germany's good fortune. And then the follow-up header just over. That's really well read, though. Wagner gets it started for Germany. Over on the right-hand side, they go down towards the byline. It's fired across the box. Chance for Germany to score. Claims for handball. Looked like it hit the leg initially. Might have bounced up onto a hand. Hopefully we'll get a better look at it soon. So home shoot leads it back. With 9,700 fans in attendance in Regensburg. Unhappy with the call, as you might expect, really. down the right hand side one to chase over on the left and that's a heavy challenge Nelson Abbey is surely going to see red for this and he does he claims he got the ball straight red from the referee now tempers flaring as well keeper comes out with the universal symbol of the hands gesturing in a round motion to say got the ball ref but Nelson Abbey is off for this. He went over the ball, really, with the left foot. It was a clumsy challenge. He was in position where he could have got it. Perhaps almost should have got it more cleanly than he managed. But he is off.
Here's a look at the potential handball as well. Hard to see from that angle, but it looked like it hit the legs, really, of the defenders. So more changes being made. Kasper Yanda comes off. England make a change as well. This game still producing the drama, even if the goals have dried up since it became 2-2. That was Dane Scarlett cutting inside, lashing the driving shot against the post. And then the header as well. Sam Bell looping the header. Here's the Germany free kick in response to the red card. It's punched away with a bit of difficulty by the England keeper. But this might be an effort in holding out now against a wave of German pressure. Wagner stands it up towards the box. Offside flag is up. Here's a look at the free kick once again. Kabadai, the man who forced the red card keeper slipped a little bit as he tried to get some power behind the push away he did enough England hanging on now with a deficit in numbers Beadle, the goalkeeper, sets himself and puts his right foot through that one. Down to the right back position for Germany, but they'll move it forward quickly. How can England adjust to this? You'd think Ben Futscher, the, go the uh, interim England coach, rather. You'd think he'd go in for a 2 2 draw right now and, and take that away from Regensburg, having lost the last three matches. It was a 3 0 defeat in Doncaster on Thursday against Italy taking a point for the elite league table might not really help propel England upwards in the standings but it would be a positive result nonetheless for them Germany though the DFB under 20s they'll be looking to sign off for the season of 2023 in style and they would love to do it with a fourth successive win here and they've got just about 10 minutes to try and find another goal against 10 men of England long pass forward it's a great pass forward as well controlled really well shot blocked when perhaps the pass would have been the better option a little bit of a lack of patience there in attack but Kabadai does really well. Wagner. Kwashi leads it out to the right-hand side. It'll come back across for Henry Blank. Any chance for Mika Bauer perhaps to add to the three goals that the Freiburg player has already scored for Germany under 20s? in this elite league Armindo Sieb might fancy another here come England for now defensive duties to do for Germany and they do it strongly good physical battle over on the left side exchanges heating up a little bit since the red card Kwashi stood his ground well Referee just trying to stop things from getting out of hand there. There wasn't really too much that needed to be said there between Dane Scarlett and Joshua Kwashi, but the referee just made sure to give them both a talking to. But we carry on with the ball back at the feet of Chuck Ernst. You can see Franz Kretzig just willing his teammates forward. 
Kretzig, the number three, already advancing well beyond the halfway line, urging his teammates to do the same. Kabadai. Kretzig with a swift turn, looking for a through ball as well, plays in a good one. Flag stays down for now. Germany make it 3 2 if the linesman keeps his flag down. But you could hear from the response of the crowd that the flag was raised. A through ball was a nice one. It cut through the England defence, but it always looked like it might have been a step beyond, and so it has proven to be. As the rain starts to come down in Regensburg, Germany denied by the offside flag. Ryan Andrews was the last man back for England. He almost, almost kept Amindo Zeeb on side, but not quite. Kretzig. Hefty challenge coming in. Charlie Webster there was a little fortunate perhaps to avoid a booking himself. It was a very clumsy challenge and a heavy one at that, but Germany get things restarted and they lift the ball into the box as well. Thoughts of an overhead kick and now Germany looking for the penalty. As there's a run there right in between a closing gap of two England defenders. But Germany are the team in a hurry to get on with this as they knock the ball back towards the keeper, Beadle. Five minutes probably still to play. Maybe a bit more on top of that with added time. Surely, though, it is the 11 men of Germany under 20s that is more likely to find the winner here. England offering nothing as an attacking force since going down to 10 men. Germany coming forward. The tackle was just about perfect and it had to be in that position England easily could have find them, found themselves going down to nine men and with Germany having a penalty but instead the tackle knocked the ball back off Ben Bobsey and, and away for a goal kick just to add a bit of insult to injury for Germany but in terms of actual injury England have a man down and he won't be in a rush to get back to his feet either, you'd imagine. Almost 88 minutes gone in Regensburg. Did that vital defensive interception or intervention at least, did it come at a cost for England? Seems to be a right shoulder issue. Germany back in possession. Kambadai onto the centre spot. Put a bit much fizz behind that pass along the halfway line. But Germany keep possession. We're into the 90th minute here. The added time will surely be stacking up. There was a, an extra two minutes of stoppage time to be added for that. But Kretzig with a clever ball into the box. Germany just wide. But again, the offside flag was up. Umut Tahumchu 
so close in the area. It was a lovely flick to get it through to him and his finish had the right idea too. Beadle would have been beaten in the England goal had that crept inside the post, but in any case, the offside flag denied Germany for the second time in the closing stages here. Really nice run from Franz Kretzig. Ghosted across outside the area well. You can see the clap of encouragement for Ronnie Edwards, the England captain. They very much look like a side. They were just trying to hold out now and hold on for a precious point, a positive point, as it would be for Ben Futcher. Seven minutes added. It's going to feel like a long time. It's probably justified given the amount of stoppages we have had in this second half. Goals, red cards, injuries and all sorts. Now England into the box looking for an unlikely winner themselves. First shot was fluffed. Second shot finds the back of the net. Webster strikes in stoppage time for England. And the 10 men move ahead against the run of play. Just when you thought it was almost inevitable that Germany would go down the other end and score. Somehow England break away and find the back of the net. Charlie Webster out of nowhere and it was such a dangerous attack. The first chance was dangerous. The shot was initially fluffed from Sam Bell. But it came back into the box. Across to the left hand side. And Webster, the man from Herrenveen in the Dutch football system, has found the net for England late in the contest here in Regensburg. It's not over yet. We've still got about six minutes left to play. There might be a couple of extra minutes added on, actually, for this too. The stoppage from this goal amounting to a little over 70 or 80 seconds. But who had that in the script? Germany 2, England 3. With six or seven minutes left to play now. Stoppage time. In Regensburg. And England in front for the first time. Well, it's been a thrilling contest. And I hope that everybody who's watching it, wherever you're watching, whether you're supporting England whether you're supporting Germany and you just fancied listening to the game with English commentary, I certainly hope you've enjoyed it because it's been a five-goal thriller in Regensburg and there might still be time for more. Germany certainly will hope so. Just as I said, England looked like a team that were only capable of hanging on and holding on for a precious point. They somehow go down the other end. That shows real character from the young Lions but the DFB under-20s will want to end the year on a high still. And it's been a good performance from them too. Ball into the box. Headed away well. Ryan Andrews. Now Germany trying to just take up camp on the edge of the area. I thought for sure that would be a free kick in favour of D Dane Scarlett. But nothing given. And Germany can get it down to the left-hand side. And attempt to get the ball into the box quickly. Or perhaps not, Yusuf Kabadei just losing control and the ball squirms away for an England throw and they'll take that. They can drain the clock of a couple of seconds at least as they blast the ball high down the right flank. Straight off for a throw in, Kretig will take it as quickly as he can. Wagner leads it across into the middle. Everybody behind the ball in the red shirts of England and white shirts of Germany pushing forward that's a clever pass out to the left though curling shot needs to be tipped away it's going to stay in play Germany getting the cross from the right hand side but that was immediately blocked and out for a throw in I thought the shot was a little bit speculative but it forced James Beadle into a good save and it nearly led to something for the DFB under 20 team 3-3 would be a fitting conclusion to what has been a fine game of football but will it end that way Will England hold on? Will England perhaps even be able to strike again as Germany commit men forward? The 
caution picked up for England there for delaying the throw in. Seemed in fairness to be about the same length of time that players normally take to take throw-ins unless they're looking to continue a quick attack but it takes on a bit of a different context when you're four minutes 45 seconds into seven added and your team with 10 men are somehow leading by one goal and here is perhaps the breakaway that I thought England might be able to lead Germany still have four defenders back in fairness Two centre-backs still staying back as Germany look for the long pass towards Cabaday. Keeper scuffed it. Oh, heart-in-mouth moment for James Beadle. Germany keep it alive. They've won the ball well there. Ryan Andrews covering over and was really looking to win a free kick as well, the Watford man. Germany keep possession. Five and a half minutes played in stoppage time. I think we'll go longer than seven after the goal. Should go to at least eight if all's fair. Henry Blank out to the left side. Chance for the overlap with Bauer. They use it. It's a good ball into the six-yard box, but it was headed away and there were no white shirts really underneath it, despite it being into a very dangerous area where the keeper couldn't come and claim it. Ball out to the right flank now. Controlled well by Tohumchu. Germany driving towards the edge of the area. Shot blocked very quickly. England not letting the ball get into the box on that occasion. Germany come again looking for the through ball. The deflection takes it back to a white shirt though. Germany over on the right-hand side. Ben Bobzian who's put in a massive shift today for the DFB under-20s. He'll want his efforts to be rewarded with something. He led to an own goal with a fantastic bit of play over on the right flank earlier. And at that point, Germany moved into a 2-1 lead. England have come back, though. Is it a first under-20 elite league win of this year, or this season at least, for England? Or can Germany deny them at the last? It wouldn't be undeserved. Play still alive, shot after shot after shot, just blocked on the edge of the box. Seven minutes is up. Will we get one more? Will we get more than that? We won't get any at all. No stoppage time added for England's goal that came just after 90 minutes. Instead, seven minutes is declared enough and England have come out as the winners in Regensburg. The German crowd left deflated, the German players as well. They've put in a really good performance today in a thrilling match in the rain in Regensburg. But ultimately, Charlie Webster has fired in for England in stoppage time and he will go down as the hero. England come from behind to win 3-2 in Regensburg. A stunning way to end the season at least for both teams. A thrilling encounter. Disappointment in the ranks of Hannes Wolf's camp. But the Germany under-20 side go out for 2023 off the back of an encouraging performance nonetheless. This easily could have been 3-2 the other way around. But all credit to interim coach Ben Futcher and England under-20s. They've done really well to come from behind and win this one despite going down to 10 men. Charlie Webster's goal in stoppage time. Finishing it off for Germany 2, England 3. Good evening and good night for me. I hope you've enjoyed this one in the under-20 Elite League. We'll say goodbye for now from Regensburg.